Hello, everybody. It's Kate Richberg. And if it's Wednesday, it must be time for Facebook Live. Um, welcome, everybody, to the beadshop.com Facebook Live Wednesday extravaganza. I'm Kate Richberg in front of the camera, and we've got Brandwin behind the camera. And uh, we've got you guys watching out there in Facebook land. It's great to have you. I'm going to jump on and see uh, who's here. Let me get the feed up, up and going. And as you can see, I am already stringing our pearls. I'm super excited to share this endless necklace and bracelet episode with you. Let's see. Are we up? Yet, yes, we are. We are. Yeah, I just there. need to. There it is. Sometimes I can't always find the feed, but I found it. I found it. Let me see if I can get all the comments and stuff going on so I can see who's here. There we go. Yes, fantastic. Um, it's great to have you all as always. So, Janice is on doing some moderating. Our Gita, who is usually on at beadshop.com. Gita is having some adventures that I can't wait to hear about, uh, so she will not be joining us today from across the sea, so um, so it's, uh, it's great to have you guys. So yes, I wanted to address this right off the bat. You know, today we're doing this endless pearl bracelet and necklace, and you know, we put the kits in yesterday. They went live on our website, and unfortunately, as of just before showtime, we're sold out already. So um, thank you guys so much. I'm really touched that you guys loved this pearl mix um, as much as I did. But I am going to show you guys today um, because I know that some of you may have missed out on it. Um, some of you may have pearls at home. Some of you may be watching this later after the broadcast. So I'm going to share with you a little bit how I put this piece together, um, the pearls and stuff, and I've got some stuff here to mix. Um, so I'll share with you. So if you missed the kit, I'm sorry that, uh, that you missed it, but never fear. We will get you up and running with some pearls, okay? So, um... Uh, there is, you know, and Aileen, there's Eileen. Hello, Eileen. There is a recipe. Um, pretty much, uh, I'm going to share the recipe with you uh, as I do a pearl mix for you. Um, and we'll just mix it together. Basically, my philosophy with freshwater pearls is you can't go wrong. You know, I put the kitchen sink in there. Uh, all of the pearls, I think, play together very, very nicely. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that we have here in the shop so you can do your own mix as well. And I'm sorry, yes, Janice just put it in the compliments. We really can't replicate it because when I mixed it, I used things that were in very limited quantity and supply. So I'm sorry about that. But don't worry, we'll have some more custom mixes and stuff for you guys. So um, not all is lost. And I will bet if you go over your, to your bead stash, you will find things that you can mix uh, with no problem at all. So it's great to have everybody here. Thank you so much for jumping on um, and uh, uh, coming on as well. I know that some of you are watching from my Kate Richburg Jewelry Educator page, so thank you as well for that. Um, I'm sorry I don't have the comments up there, but I'll check out the comments over there in a few. So it's great to have you guys here as well. Just as a reminder, if you guys are fairly new to watching us on Wednesdays, you uh, can find us in a few different places after the broadcast. You can find us right here on our Facebook page here at beadshop.com. You can also find us on our YouTube channel. Karen, after the broadcast, um, uploads the uh, broadcast in high def, and it's over on our YouTube channel, beadshop.com. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which we hope that you do, um, you get notifications every time a new video goes up. Like, you know, like when Cara and I were filming at Beads, Balls, and Jewels. Um, we did some things that are up on YouTube there as well. Um, when Janice and I were, uh, Andrea were at um, Bead Fest, we did some behind the scenes filming there. So all of that stuff is up on our YouTube channel. Uh, along with all of our 
tutorials and stuff like that. So it's a good place to find it. And of course, if you go to our website, beadshop.com, if you uh, go right on the top navigation bar, there's a little Facebook Live um, uh, button there. You just press on that and it'll take you right to all of our pages with our Facebook Live as well as our Free Tip Friday. So you can find all of the materials lists, all that kind of good stuff. The last thing I wanted to mention was as well, um, you know, every, um, at the end of the broadcast, we get, um, Brandwin takes photos and Drea writes up the episode notes and they come out as episode notes, kind of, um, kind of a cliff notes of the broadcast, if you will. And so those, um, notes, uh, you'll find on each Facebook. Facebook Live page. So um, they're super helpful. Drea does an amazing job. Brandon does an amazing job with the photos. And you can, uh, um, it has the timestamps where everything is and all the instruction and all the links to all the products and any special notes and stuff. So the episode notes are great. It's something that Janice um, started and Drea has um, jumped in and continued. So We've got that. Uh, a couple of other things I wanted to mention before we get started as people are jumping on um, is Karen, who is always working to improve our website, um, has created some new things in the search feature. I know that a lot of you sometimes when you're looking for a project and you're like, wait a minute, how do I find, you know, how do I find the projects or whatever? You can now search projects. So if you go to our website at beadshop.com and let's, I don't know, let's find a project, any project. So if I'm looking for, um, let me turn this a little bit. I don't know, it's kind of hard for you guys to see. But In the Garden is one of our favorite projects, right? Um, so if I type in the garden up in our search bar. See that there? Right there? Now when I type that up you can see some things come up just automatically. Some of the things that are in the projects, the actual Facebook project, the name of the project itself, Garden Fairy, so uh, one that's a, a kind of a derivative of it or you know has garden in the title. But if you just hit return look what comes up here. And we've got products, 193 products that are in the In the Garden series. We go to projects. That's where you want to click. And look at that. In the Garden is here. Then there's Garden Path, Garden Fairy, Gray Gardens, Follow Your Arrow, which is a derivative, and Tricks to Laddering. Um, Drea comes up. Um, so, because she's done one of them, so, but if you click there on In the Garden, um, and the project will come up there. So, um, it's a lot easier to find, um, your projects, and Karen's also asking me, Karen's peeking. Karen, can we also, um, search people? Yeah, if you search right? Kate, they'll try searching. So, Kate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna search myself. Let's see what comes up. It's Google. It is. So, oh. So it looks like a lot of my favorites come up, right? Um, let's see, some of my projects. Oh, yeah, so if you go to Projects 29. Oh yeah, look at that. There's some Kate projects right there. That's awesome. So I bet if you typed in Janice, let's type in Janice for fun. Janice. There's probably five billion results here, right? So for Janice, let's see what comes up. Projects, so let's click on that. And yeah, look at a bunch of Janice's projects come up. So if you wanna see kind of like the stuff that, you know, like that I've designed or Karen's designed or who, you know, any of us have designed, just type in our first name, you'll find us there. You'll also go to our staff picks, I think, so. Great job, Karen. Well, I want to also say, even if you don't know, uh -huh. sorry you guys can't see my face, <laughs> if you don't know like the actual phrase, even okay. if you type in 
a word like you uh, want to search Bollywood and you didn't know okay. it was Bollywood, just type in Bali. Bali, it'll the be there. So even partial show. things, right? So if Bali, just for Bollywood. So great job, Karen, on that functionality. She Thank continues you. to amaze us, to amaze us. And Karen, people are loving you. For it, and she says she loves you back. So great, everyone! You're getting bravos and thumbs up. Hearts, I think hearts, hearts. hearts. I think we just end the broadcast now. No one, yeah. we're done and seen. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, yeah, and so you know, also you guys. I don't know if you've seen, but before we get right into the project, I'll show you one more thing. If you haven't seen it yet, and I think I may have pointed this out before, but I'm going to pull up one of our really huge categories like check glass, okay? So check glass is right here. <clears throat> if I pull that up and click on it, it's a giant, giant category. But look at, have you noticed here on the side, Karen added some new functionality. So it's really easy to search. You can search them by size. So let's go for four millimeter, right? So all the four millimeters comes come up. But let's see, maybe I'm looking for four millimeter and for carrier beads, right? So I can have both of those come up, all right? What if I'm looking for four millimeter carrier beads and the color purple? There they are, okay? So it's really, really great functionality for you guys, and it's so much faster. It's, it's now so much faster for me to use and to find. I use this all the time when I'm searching for stuff on our site. So really, really great job. Uh, Karen, we're trying to make it uh, make it easier for you guys because sometimes it gets confusing. There's so much to shop for. Sometimes it's hard to um, to find things. So um, thank you guys so so much for that. Uh, okay. Oh, and I see that Kara has jumped on. Hello, Kara. Kara's off today. Um, <laughs> catching up with all of her own stuff because <laughs> she's here all the time. All right, well, after a bracing drink of coffee, let's jump in and um, <clears throat> get this show on the road. So, as I said earlier, I'm sorry that the kit has already, um, has already sold out, um, but I'm gonna talk to you about how I mix the kit um, and how you can add maybe some of the things that you already have at home and stuff like that. So never fear, we're gonna, um, we're gonna um, get you up and running as well. Um, and Karen, everybody wants to see you, but <laughs> I bet I will be able to persuade Karen to come back on a Facebook Live with me today. <laughs> will you say a quick hello to everybody? Because you're so cute. Come and say hello to everybody. There's our Karen. Some of you have seen Karen um, on Facebook Live with me, but there's there's our girl right looking? there, right there. But, but I don't the see usual myself. camera. It well, there's there's, a, there's a, delay. a delay. Oh, you're like Hi. you're like. Wait a minute. Where am I? There you are. So Sorry for my you. crazy no, hair. No, you look amazing as always. So thank you so much. There we go. Everyone's oh. like, yes, Karen, yes. <laughs> there you are. Look how cute you are. There we are. <laughs> She's awesome. Um, Alrighty, so let's uh, let's jump into the project. Um, so Brandon, let's move things around right. and let's get everybody the 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 view here, and we'll jump in. There you go. Go here. I'll take that. Thank y'all. We'll just do here, and we'll move this camera. I might need to stand up. There we go, because I'm a little short. There and we I, are. I have a little bit higher to hopefully get a little bit more. Whoops, um, says, looks like I'm leaning a little bit. Are we okay there? Yeah, that, um... <clears throat> no, no. Okay. How are we doing? Is it a little, is it a little, um, can I move this back just a little bit here? I know I'm going to screw up your thing, but I think it's a little, it's a little, um, heavy. There we go. I'm going to move things over so everybody can I'm see this. Show you what you got here so I can see where it is. Great. Okay. That's okay, right? Yeah. I moved everything down. We're still okay. All right. Good, 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 good. 
I put a piece of tape on this end. They turned it away. That's okay. All right, I think we're set. Let me get back to our feed here. Okay. So, um, let's talk first. Let's talk the project, and then I have some other things for you guys to see as well. But the whole um, idea behind, well, one of the ideas behind this um, behind this broadcast is talking about how to make things that are endless. Okay, so here's my here's the piece that I'm I'm wearing now. Right, this is the the hero of the of the project here. Um, the uh, endless knotted piece that I'm wearing. And you can see on this, I'm going to just undo it, unwrap it, okay, unwrap, unwrap, unwrap. And you can see it is truly endless. There's no clasp, okay? So the no clasp option, I think, especially uh, on something that's like these pearls, I think it's a fun way to kind of mix up your patterns and designs, okay? So this also in the kit, if you nabbed the kit, it has a little um, jade, nice white jade, undyed, untreated jade disc that's running over just a few of our nickel plated size 11 seed beads, okay? So that, uh, it's kind of a little, I think kind of a fun little, I don't know, play plaything in this piece okay so the let's start with the length of this okay and the length um, let me let me measure here so you guys can see the length here and this is doubled it's gonna be about it's about 44 inches for me okay so, and for me, my wrist size, and this is going to be super personal for you guys, right? However you, you size it. But my wrist is about six and a half, okay? That's my size. So, this 44 inches just wraps really easily around my wrist. You can see there's a little bit of extra, but you kind of, you know, spread that extra around through. And I have two, four, six strands wrapped around my wrist this way. Okay. So <clears throat> it's kind of a fun way to just have an easy, quick piece of jewelry to put on. Also, this 44 inches, if I double it over, double it, double it, double it, like this, it's a double strand necklace that um, is perfect 22 inches to wear. So it's a great layering piece, or you can just have it go long like this, right? And wear it layered, okay? So we're gonna talk about how to actually create this piece in just a few, but I wanted to share some other design options <clears throat> that you could do. <clears throat> and Cara, she brought in a piece that she made years ago that I wanted to share with you. This isn't a clasp that we carry, but we do carry some um, multiple strand clasps that would work very well, uh, especially our Clio clasp um, that we have uh, would work very well for this. And you can see here, let me bring this into frame so you guys can see this. Kara made this beautiful, I don't know why I'm turning it the other way, there we go. She made this beautiful multi-strand piece years ago, okay? So a Clio clasp would work really well in the place of this great old um, tie silver piece. Those were the days, right? This was a piece Car made so long ago. Those were the days when you could find just really heavy, really wonderful, um, <clears throat> cool closures. But we'll keep our eye out for stuff like this. But again, the Clio would work really, really well. And so you can see she just did her pearl mix um, and she strung this on soft flex and she used some spacers and stuff in here. So I thought it was really a beautiful 
piece that I would share with you. So this is a Kara. <coughs> this is a Kara piece. I also brought some of my pearl collection of things that I've made and worn over the years. And, you know, in the description of our now sold out kit, Janice uh, wrote about how I've collected freshwater pearls. And it's really true. I have collected freshwater pearls forever and ever. This was a magnum opus that I made, okay? Um, it's a real special occasion necklace. And I strung, these are I think a four millimeter, just a cream pearl. And I'm gonna measure this for you guys because <clears throat> you guys won't believe me how long this piece is. You so won't. That's right, it's not 44. Nope, it's not 54. Nope, I've run out of tape. So that was 60 inches. But wait, there's more. 60. 70. 80 inches. I'm going. 90 inches. 110. 114 inches of pearls. Right here. All in one giant long strand. Okay. And I used um, a, a classic pearl clasp, which, Janice, we might have to get these back in because I think they're really kind of a fun thing. But we've got so many wonderful clasps. You could use our lobster, our, our swivel lobster clasp would look great on this. And, of course, just end tips there. And so something like this, uh, and this wraps, I wrap this, I don't know how many billions of times around my neck. But it's very, uh, you know, it's very old world. Um, I just love it, love it, love it. And um, so yeah, you can just string forever and ever. Um, but this is, a, this is a fun piece. And this is all knotted, uh, Cindy is asking if it's on um, Softflex. It is not. It is on, um, it's on thread. And if there's time today, and I'll make time to make sure, um, I'm going to show you how to add thread because I have another one of these little beauties that I'm doing. And I'll show you um, how to add thread to this, okay? So that's this guy, okay? I also have a piece, and Janice might remember uh, this one a while back. It was, I don't know, we had lunch or something some day, one day, and she was wearing this, and I exclaimed about how much I loved it. So she took it off her neck and gave it to me. <coughs> so, you know, when you're around Janice, just exclaim how much you love her jewelry, and then you'll, you'll, you never know what you might end up with. But... This was a piece that Janice knotted, uh, again, from Janice's pearl collection, um, really delicious 10-millimeter um, uh, freshwater pearls, almost perfect uh, in their roundness. But I wanted to share with you this closure, um, because this does have the lobster claw at the end. And notice how she's used, uh, this is just some old faceted, I think, um, Maybe topaz or, or aquamarine, maybe. They're just beautiful. Um, and notice how she used the small end tips here, and she terminated it in a ring right here, okay? And so this really is a beautiful closure that sits in the front, okay? So you could make your own by simply using our mini hoop, right? And you could grab some head pins. And the head pins, you could just use, I don't know, I'll grab something from this pearl mix, right? You could uh, make yourself some little dangles and wire wrap them right on, um, right here, uh, and just use it on the closure. Now she's also, what Janice did was that link, and she just put it in the comments, that link was from some chain, okay? And so I just happened to pull some chain. <coughs> this is our smooth sailing chain that I pulled out. And that smooth sailing would look great with some pearl dangles. <coughs> Pardon me, with some pearl dangles um, on the end. And so you simply, I'm just using our 1.5, or I'm sorry, one and a half inch 24 gauge head pins. 
And we have a lot of skill builders on wire wrapping, so I'm not going to go very slowly with the wire wrapping today because it's more a show about pearls than about wire wrapping. But if you go to beadshop.com, we have a fantastic skill builder on the step-by-step -step on how to do this simple wire wrap along with some briolette wraps and stuff like that. So I'm just going to do that in real time. Okay, and clip this extra away. <clears throat> and then you can see how now maybe I would maybe I'll just cut it right there on the big on the small link and so then you could continue to add some dangles along this thing right to just make yourself a little dangle a little embellishment you could even then connect it to a hoop like that or whatever this would also make an amazing earring to go along with your pearl piece, okay? So um, that would all work. Uh, the other, the so I wear this uh, layered a lot, and I layer pearls all the time. This is, uh, I bought myself a gift of pearls. Uh, I don't know, maybe I was teaching, I could have been teaching in Tucson, or I don't know, but I made, I and I think it was kind of when Julie and Julia came out, the movie, so this was years ago. Um, and so I got myself a strand of Julia Child pearls because Julia is my spirit animal. So I wear these layered a lot, right? And we have these really great 7 millimeter cream pearls on our website that would look amazing, would look just like this, or our big potato 7 to 9 millimeter. Um, both of those would look great as a layering piece. And it's simply classic. Nothing else, um, you know, added into it. It's my Julia Child um, simple, um, simple necklace. And then I can also, when I'm really feeling crazy, oh, that chain, Tammy, was smooth sailing. And I have another, and the smooth sailing comes in the shiny and, uh, shiny and the antique and um, brass and all of that other stuff. So, so you can see sometimes I also come in and I wear this like this, and I just, um, I just layer them all, which is going to be great. And then I'll come in eventually now and add this to, uh, to my layering extravaganza. So I'll be totally, totally extra, right? And yeah, I do wear, um, Michelle, this clasp, I wear this one in front. The other ones, I don't really care where the clasp ends up, okay? So I think this is a really beautiful way to just, you know, wear them, you know, be as extra as you want to be. That's what I say. We also have this other chain that just debuted this week. It's called Three Worlds. And this Three Worlds chain is also great to use these connectors um, as components as well. And I just wanted to point that out. So if you wanted a ring that maybe was larger but not as heavy as the mini hoop, right? You could isolate one of these rings. These two rings here kind of float around in this ring here, so you could you could utilize these, okay? They'd be fun. So, uh, so that's the story there. So that's the story with this. So I know it looks kind of luscious. I just want to, <laughs> and this is mine. <laughs> this is, I like this right here. I'm being a little greedy. Um, but let me, so let me slide this over. And I want to show you now how I would do some mixing, okay? And what I'll do, Brandwin, would you grab me actually what we do our mixes in? Just one of our plastic, um, boxes that we pull. I'm going to, you're going to see a little, a little, um, I don't know, peek behind the scenes. <clears throat> we do a lot of our mixes right in these little uh, plastic bins that we pull your orders in when I'm ready to do a mix. Ones are all full. Oh, are they full? No, uh, the, one of those, the, the ones with the handles maybe. Okay. Yeah, that one's perfect. Yeah, perf. One of these guys. And this is how when we pull your orders, we pull them in right into these plastic little bins. But I also use this a lot for doing my mixes. Okay, <clears throat> so I grab this <clears throat> right from, <clears throat> pardon me, sorry. Brandon, would you give me my water that's right there? I'm so excited about the pearls. I am, it's making me just go for a clamp. So give me just one second here. 
Okay, so I've grabbed some pearls actually off the wall from what we actually carry here uh, in the shop. I have grabbed the five millimeter blue iris. I've grabbed the six to eight millimeter soft gray. I've grabbed the bronze, no, the dark gray iris potato, the gray petite rice, the five millimeter soft gray, and the five millimeter cream. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And these strands are all about 15 inches long, so you can tell that's going to be a super, um, you know, it'll be a really long strand. So, but you can, you know, you can divide these up into more than one project. So what I look for when I'm creating a mix like this, and really in any of my mixes that I create, I'm looking for a variation in size, shape, color. Um, I want to make sure that I have some big elements when I do these pearl mixes, some small elements, maybe some tiny elements like those guys. And so when I do this stringing, and you can see in the piece, let me bring the piece in. This is where it is all strung up. You can see that you can start to get some really interesting variation here. Okay. And again, this is the one that's done from the mix. So there are some special beads in here that we don't carry. Um, so then I just cut them up, right? So let's free them. Let's just cut them. I'm going to cut them with wild abandon. <clears throat> Take them off the strand. And you could add a, um, I don't know, you could add a semi-presh in here if you wanted, right? It doesn't have to be all pearls. You could add, I don't know, whatever your favorite semi-precious is. We've got so many that would work beautifully with this. Um, and Eileen is asking, are whole sizes an issue? And they're not usually. And I'm going to talk about whole sizes. Actually, you're very timely, um, Eileen, because I'm going to talk about whole sizes actually next. So see, I just have them all in my little bin. We're just going to clip them. We're not going to worry about you know, just free them, because they look so different on a strand, right? And so if you're having trouble with random, and I know so many of you do, um, then just free them. Put them in a mix. Make yourself a mix. Okay? So there we go. There's our random mix. Then what I'll do, what we did was we put them in a little bag for you. But I'm just going to pour some of this mix into my little dish. Come back here, Pearl. Wait, now they're all going all over. Okay. So there we have it. So there they are. Okay. So now this is ready for me to play around with. Now, looking forward to the projects, <clears throat> what I did here... We're gonna, I'm going to share with you how to close this in two ways, okay? This one was strung on Softflex, all right? Can you see the spacer that's in between here? That spacer is this, um, let me get my list here of what we actually put in it, the spacer is the 11-576, I think it's the dyed alabaster, let me look, I thought I had it written down, but I don't, 11 dash, what is it, 576, and that is the, yes, the dyed smoky opal silver lined alabaster. Alabaster. So delicious, right? So I used I used this one as the spacer because if you look at the one that's strung on silk that's right next to it, the silk I used 
it's the size 4 in black. But you could use a tan if you didn't want it to be dark. You could use a color like that, um, what do we call this, lilac. <clears throat> you could mix it up. You could use a gray. So any of those colors here would work. I chose black because I like sometimes that little dark spacer in with these pearls. But notice how the silver lined alabaster, you guys, gives it almost a completely different air. And this other, the bead itself is very luminous, right? So it really adds, I think, a lot of shine to those pearls, right? A lot of luminosity, okay? So I also pulled some other beads that would work with this, right? That we carry, um, if you wanna mix it up a little bit. I um, pulled, um, it's the 11-451, the gunmetal. I have the galvanized champagne. This is the nickel plated, the one that Emily loves so much. And the nickel plated is the one that we added a few, just a little sprinkling of in your kit for this um, disc to travel over. And then we've got the 11-4221, the 4222, and the 4201. So any of these metallics would look great in between these as well as the, um, the alabaster. So all of this would work, okay? Um, it would all work. So it just depends on what you, what you wanna use. And yeah, you could use a metal. We have the metal 11 knots. Tammy just mentioned on the feed that she used the temple, the brass temple, which would look great as well. So it really just depends on what, uh, what color you wanna pull out of it, right? The galvanized champagne might make it a little bit warmer, right? The gunmetal might make it a little cooler. So it just depends on what you like, okay? So that's how I create this mix. Uh, so I'm gonna push that to the side. So let me measure the one that I have on Softflex here just to see how much longer I need to go here. My aim is 44 inches for me, for my length. So let me see here what I've got. We're real close, I just have a few, so that's good. We're in, <clears throat> we're in good, we're in good shape here. So, and out of the mix, will you hand me that bowl, um, please, Berin one? In the mix, if you guys ordered the mix, if you guys grabbed the mix, this is one that I use the mix for, and you can see you've got plenty of beads left over in that mix to make other stuff with as well. So you won't use every single bead, um, probably, that's, that's in your little bag. So you've got plenty to work with. So I'm going to start by uh, talking about the knotted piece first, okay? So let's bring this guy back into the floor. The thread that I used, as I mentioned before, is the size 4, and I used the black. I used the silk with needle, and you guys have, um, you guys have uh, seen me use this before. Jan uh, we did a whole show on using this silk with needle um, and end tips and stuff like that. Um, but this one's great because it's a nice heavy thread and the needle is already attached. Okay. And I see that Sarah O is on here. Sarah Ayler from Softflex. Hello, Sarah. I believe that's you. It's great to have you watching as always. So we're going to just take this off the cord. Okay. And yeah, Kim, that's a really great um, uh, point. As soon as this is closed up, the one on Softflex, I'll show you kind of the difference between the drape. There's a little bit of difference, but um, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So what I do to start with this, you guys, is I work at the very end of my thread down here, okay? So I'm going to um, start by putting a piece of tape on the end of my thread.
And again, I'm gonna just pull stretch this just slightly to get a little bit of the kink out of this, right? There we go. There we go. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna choose a bead. I'm gonna use some of the remainder of the mix here. So I'm just gonna start with, it doesn't matter, with whatever. But I'm gonna start with one, maybe it does matter. Maybe I'm gonna start with this one. Now, I'm going to put on a bead and I'm not gonna tie a knot on this one. I'm gonna put on a second bead because when I come back through after things have been strung, I'm gonna bring my piece back through my closure, my needle is what I'm trying to say, and we're gonna tie that closing knot right here, okay? So you're gonna see how, how that closes up. So let's slide all these down. And I'm going to, I'm gonna string on now another bead. Maybe I'll make it this size, doesn't matter. Okay. So I put this guy on. Now we're gonna just come on down. And again, the silk on the card, the silk with needle, let me put, let me show you here. You can see how that is a twisted thread around and see how it's connected to the needle right there. If I kind of untwist it, you can see how it's doubled over. See that there? All right, so that's a number four. Okay, so I'm gonna <clears throat> slide these down all the way. And I've got, I don't know, maybe about two inches or so here of tail. And my first knot where it's gonna tie is right here in between. So. The way that I do this, and you've seen me do this before with this thread, it's just a simple overhand knot. I'm going to use my knotting tweezer, and I'm going to grab inside the, the loop of the knot and on the outside just underneath the purl. And I'm going to tighten that up. Okay. Now before I tighten it too tightly. See how there's a little bit of space in that knot? I just go ahead and push it up with my knot and tweezers. Okay. So there's my first knot. Now I'll do this again. Make a loop. Whoops. My thread's so long it's caught there. There we go. Now, one leg inside the knot, one leg outside the knot. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Just before the knot is completely closed, I'll push that knot up right next to the purl. Now, if the purl, if the knot, the knot has to be loose in order for this to work. Okay, let me do, let me do another one. I slide it on. So an overhand knot, I wrap that thread around my hand and I just tuck it under, right, like that. Slide everything through, put the knot on the table. Now, what if your knot goes all the way down here? Oh no, look at that, my knot is not next to my beads. Doesn't matter, just walk that loop. Use your tweezers to walk it up. Once it's close, grab it underneath that pearl, okay? I have the tweezers, I'm right-handed, so I'm holding these tweezers in my right hand and they're kind of, you know, like a little duck bill. They're kind of, the, the handle is here, the head of the tweezer is there. I'm holding the thread tightly enough to control the thread, but not so tight that I can't pull this knot closed, okay? And you just pull it closed, and see how it's tightening up on the tweezer. Can you see that right there? And it's a pretty big loop at this juncture, okay? But that doesn't matter. You actually want that because as long as the knot is right up against the pearl, let me get my finger out of here, but I want you to see that. Whoops. There we go. As long as that loop is right up against the pearl and it's big, I can still push that knot closed, okay? 
like this, and I just pull uh, both in both directions. This, my left hand pulls the thread towards me. The tweezer pushes the knot away from me, all in one fluid motion. Okay, and there it is, done and done. Okay, let me do a couple more. Let me get my thread here. And uh, and just be random. You don't have time to think about what pearl you're putting on, right? You're just worried about getting your knots in the right place. Okay, wrap around, flip it through. And sometimes I don't use a tweezer. I use my hands, but that's for another day. That was a, that was a sneaky one. Uh, let me get back here with the tweezer. I'm a fast knotter. And so this comes in and goes around. Grab it. You're the boss of this thread. Pull, pull, pull. Some people use an awl for this, but I find that a knotting tweezer is a little bit better. And you guys, don't worry about, if you look really up close and personal with these that I've done, see this pearl right here? It has a little bit of space on it, right? That's okay. You know, no one's going to be that up in your grill that they're going to see your, you know, that there's a little bit of space in your knots, right? That's all right. Um, that, that'll be okay. Uh, and there's a question here, what might be an alternative for knotting on a plane? Well, you can, uh, it is such a great pr travel project. Um, you can use, uh, do this in a toolless method. Um, I think Janice has, I don't know Janice if it's in your pearl knotting handout that we have from way back in the day uh, from when the bead shop was our brick and mortar. Yep, she has, Janice just linked it. She was reading my mind. She calls it the train plane boat method, right? Um, and it's our old class handout where Janice does it without a tool. And I love doing it without a tool as well. And I'm going to do a quick few fast ones here so you can see how I close this up. My um, no tool knotting method is a little different than Janice's. I've adapted it to work for me. But it really gets... Um, it really gets faster and faster the more that you do it. And I bet we can... Um, one day persuade Janice to do a Facebook Live and to go through that old school class handout. I think that would be great, Janice, um, to have you uh, to have you do that. But this is my real time pearl knotting um, speed right here. There we go. All right. So, um, but I've been doing this for almost thirty years. So I'm not. I'm just trying to be fast. Uh, so let me show you how we would close this off. Let's pretend that this is a closed uh, uh, um, a necklace already, okay? Because I want to show you um, how this works. And a couple of people are, are saying the other things that they do. Susan, you use a T-pin, which is great. I think that would work well for the plane. You could get that on there. Um, you could totally use a toothpick. Um, but... Um, I think it would be great. No, Janice, I think that you need to come in and, and do that one um, because that's you are where all of this originated. Um, so I think it would be fun. I think it would be fun. not to go anywhere. Right. That, I found that on a recent thing. <laughs> oh, right. Yes, you've got to corral them. So you also have in your little kit, um, I have it here. Let me get a little bowl here. And let's pretend that this is a whole, um, a whole bunch. Yeah, and Janice also mentioned, let me show you how to do that. You could use the pearl as a pusher. Let me show you. Let me show you that one. Let me get a pearl here, on here. That's a good one. Let me get this before I get to that bowl. If we tie our knot, and I already have my pearl in place, I tie my overhand knot. <clears throat> And you can see, if I just have the pearl right up next to it, see that there? You can do that too. That's a good trick. Sometimes I forget about that one, but that's a good one. 
that's a good one. Let me do this a couple more times so you guys can see that. Let me put on my pearl. There we go. Is your feet okay, Brandwin? I got kicked off. Yeah, I did too. But everything everything's seems seamless. Okay. I think that sometimes they, I don't know, Facebook is always so glitchy. So just log on back in. Um, so there it is. There's the knot. And see how you kind of have to creep the pearl up and creep the knot closed? See that there? And there it goes, holding the pearl in place. And see, the pearl is my pusher. Ta-da! There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a good way to do it. Yeah, I think the feed uh, momentarily just kind of came off. So sorry about that. But sometimes, sometimes Facebook is glitchy like that. So to close it up, okay, with our little closure here, okay, we're going to come in and I'm going to put some seed beads on. I got these size 11 nickel plated and you have some extra but I used four but you can use more than that however long oh one more time oh, I'm saying one more time one more time all right all right one more because I need a couple more pearls on here anyway I'll do one more with this knot here we go tie the knot I like to put the pearl on beforehand, but that's okay too. So there's my knot. I put on my pearl, being really careful not to close the knot up. There we go. Okay, so here's the pearl. Okay. Inch the pearl towards the knot and inch the thread away, kind of all at the same time. Ta da! There we go. And you can watch this over and over on replay. <laughs> you can watch me close that knot again and again. If your feed is frozen, sometimes Facebook gets a little bit glitchy. It should be pretty seamless on the replay, but if you just exit out of the Facebook feed and come on back in, then everything should be, uh, should be good to go. Okay, so sorry about that. Sometimes it Facebook is just glitchy sometimes. So now I'm putting on my little beads. Let me put five on this time. Okay. There we go. I think Ellen was curious the way you do it. Oh, I'll show you that sometime, Ellen. I'll, I'll, it's a little contrary to the handout, but Janice's handout is great. So go ahead to our um, class handouts and um, grab that one. And you'll get a good um, a good how-to. So here we go. I put on my little my little disc. Now the magic happens on this side. I used a larger bead, right? Because <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that the whole size was pretty big. But you know, honestly, uh, the smaller pearls, pearls, the whole sizes in pearls are pretty darn consistent. So even if you have a bigger hole, a bigger pearl like this, or a smaller pearl like this, the hole sizes will be about the same. Okay, so I'm gonna come in right here where I started, and remember I didn't have a knot between my first two beads. Okay, then I'll just come in with my needle, being really careful not to split the thread, and being careful not to pull this pearl off the end. Oh, whoops. Sorry, you guys. I I was so excited to get that through. I screwed up. Uh, let me put on one more bead. Sorry, sorry. There we go. I need one more bead right here. And Janice always mentions, check the beads before you use them on the end that the double thread will go through. And that is a very, very good point. So now I have, let me just get this through there and show you what I've got. So what I've got here on my endless strand, and we're working on this portion right here, okay. I have here my closing pearl, a knot, this pearl, no knot 
between the 11 knots and that ending pearl. I've got five little 11 knots on there, four or five, whatever you like. No knot between the 11 knot and this pearl. Then I send this thread back through that bead. Okay, so this, you just need one pearl that the threads are going to go through doubled. Okay, so we're going to close this up. Bring it around. And this is where, you guys, and again, we'll pretend that this is our really long necklace that's here. This is where having this be a doubled thread over is um, is really good, okay? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to undo this thread, untwist it, because what it is really is two threads that are twisted and ready to go. So I untwist. You can also kind of hold it in the air and un let it untwist, but your other thread gets a little gets a little twisty. So you just have to be patient. So now once you've untwisted this thread, I have two threads that I can use to knot with. Come on, there we go. Let me put this down so you can see it. And I'm going to split these threads up. One thread to my left, one thread to my right. Okay. Now, there's just a tiny little bit of space here. We don't want a whole lot of space because we don't want extra thread kind of roaming around here. So now what I'm going to do is the threads are coming up from below the strand, up and around the cord. So if the cord is here, the threads are coming up and tying around. Okay. <clears throat> I come up and I tie a full square knot right over left and down before I tie my second knot my left over right I'm going to get my hypo cement my GS good old GS I'm going to add a dot right on the first half of that knot. Then I'll tie my second half. Left over right. Saturate that knot with the GS one more time. And I'm going to end up with one more one more half hitch just to make sure that everything's tight. And since I've already put the glue on, the thread, it's glued in there, it's ready to go. Now, I don't cut this away for 24 hours. I let my thread really sit. Let that knot rest, okay? So now I'm gonna come in, and this is where the tail was, right? The tail is here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to, or the needle, I'm sorry, this is where the needle was, not the tail. The needle is here, so I'm going to come in and clip away. I still have all of this thread to work with later, okay? So I've saved my little card. I'll wrap this around the card and put it away. Then I'll do the exact same thing here that I did with the other one. Now I can hold it up and untwist it. And I'll do the same knot, making sure that my threads are coming from below the strand so they come up and around to tie. I'm going to tie my half hitch right over left. Add my glue at this point. Now, left over right. Okay. 
and down. One more half hitch for good measure and one more dot of glue. Okay. Once the glue, if you get a little bit of glue on your pearl, don't worry about it at this point. Actually let it dry and then you can flick it off with your fingernail. If you try and screw with it now, you're just going to end up getting glue everywhere. So resist the urge to kind of play around with it. And again, I would let this sit overnight and let this go. Okay, so that's going to sit over there. Alrighty. So let's, I want to show you while we're on thread, okay, before we move on to the soft flex. There's been some chat about different threads and stuff for um, for knotting, and I wanted to share this with you. This is a piece that I have in progress for me, another giant long piece of, of pearl. This time I've used a, an end tip, you can see, so I've tied a knot, gone through the end tip. I've used a little four millimeter bead here at the end just to make it look fancy, okay? And so this is how, remember that huge 110 inch strand of pearls that I was, that I was working? This is how I added thread. So, and I think I have time to show you where it's still, it's only 1130, so I've got time to do this. Though I should have checked this for knots before the broadcast, so let me just unknot this and talk about the thread that I used. This is micro ceylon that I've strung with, and it's micro ceylon in light blue. Okay, I love using ceylon, this micro ceylon especially, for knotting freshwater pearls. And I'll show you the size of the knot. It gives me a good size knot that's not too gigantic and not too teeny. Sorry, I thought that this was all on it's a good thing I'm going to switch threads right I thought this was all untangled come on now there we go oh, just a little patience and a little I'm the boss of this knot will get you out of trouble there we go so close. Isn't that frustrating when you put a project down and it magically gets a knot? There we go. There it is. So let me show you. Janice talked also about pre-stringing. Okay. And so you can see I pre-strung. These are the beads that haven't been knotted. These are the beads that have been knotted. So I pre-string and I bring them down. This is when I do my hand knotting. I pull all of these through that knot, come down, get the knot right on top of the pearl, put my thumb on top of it, and tighten it up. Okay. So if I were going to, you know, do all of this hand knotting with this, this is how I'd do it. I'd preload them. You can also preload them like this and use that pearl as the pusher. Now notice how I'm using, needs to get a little closer, a little closer. Come on now. There we go. There we are. Notice how I've used a double strand. Okay. Now the double strand, what I do, let me show you how I've set this up. This is a flexible eye needle. This one here. What I have here also is the collapsible eye needle. And I want to show you the difference because I get this question a lot and this is where sometimes there's a, a stumbling block, okay? This collapsible eye right here, and I think you can even see with them one next to another. See how this is a heavier needle? It's a thicker wire, twisted wire. And notice how the eye is a lot bigger and how it has a twist on the top. 
Sometimes if you use this needle, the collapsible eye, rather than the flexible eye, this junction is too heavy or too thick to go through your pearls, okay? So it's the flexible eye with the thinner needle, the thinner wire, and the simple loop that you use for pearls, okay? This has all kinds of great applications, but for me, with pearl knotting, this is not the needle. It's the it's the flexible eye that you want to use, okay? So I did use a double strand, okay? So here's the light blue, and I'm going to prepare a, a strand. I'm going to pretend that I broke this strand, okay? And we'll all be sad, but I'll show you how to fix it. So I'm just going to give myself, I don't know, a length. And it doesn't have to be a huge amount that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to control that thread. So I'm just going to give myself, I don't know, maybe a couple of yards and fold it over. And I'm going to string my needle. Okay. And to start, I would just tie a knot at the end, right, and add my end tip. Okay. But here, let's say that I was coming along coming along and I break my thread. Let me get some thread here. And I, the thread breaks. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? All right, that's okay. What you do is this. You're going to make sure that your thread, that your pearl has a big enough hole And I'm going to send this needle, I can't see it, I need to get a little closer to my face here. I really can't see it. Sorry, you guys. There we go. That hole is tiny. I'm going to come through. It doesn't want to go with four strands. That's okay. We're going to take one of these strands away. We're going to pull one of these out. There we go. And we're going to slide this through. Okay. So you can see, here's the one that I had to take away to get these strands through. No big deal. Again, let me get a little closer to my face so I can see, and then I'll push this down, and then I'll show you what I've got. Sorry. All right, there we go. So see, this is what I've got here. Let me make some sense of it. Here's my broken strand, my broken strand, the tails of my thread here. And if you can't get both of these through, let's say that I could only get one thread through. So let me pull that up. Okay, that's okay. We could only get a single thread. That's all right. Because look what happens here, you guys. Here's this. Notice how I've got two tails of thread, right? That's okay. I'll push my pearl down. You know, you remember how I closed off right here? It's the same thing. We're going to do the exact same thing. Let me get that little closure, like this. Okay? So I'm going to come in, and I'm going to tie a half hitch. Tie them together, put on your glue. There's always a way out of it, you guys, always. Put on a little glue. If you've got long tails of thread, you'll be all right, all right? Now I'm gonna tie the other strand. the other knot rather, right over left, left over right, and down. This time though I want to tie around the strand, so I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to add one more drop of glue right there and tie that half hitch on the other side. 
Okay. But wait, there's more. Here's that other broken half. It's right here. Okay. Here's the thread that I've, remember that needle that I've knotted, that I've strung. This is my new thread. I should have made it a different color so you guys can tell the difference. But all I do now is I pull this new thread. These are the old threads down there. Here's this broken thread. Here's my new thread. I'm just going to get a, a pearl. Put it on, just like that, right? And again, I've got my old tail and the new tail, and I'm going to do the same thing. Right over left and down, add a little glue. left over right that forms the knot there we go flip it over finish that knot on this side with a half hitch glue it up I can keep going but I'd let those tails rest 24 hours Okay, make sure that's nice, a nice firm knot. Okay, there we go, nice and tight. So that's it. It's like it never happened, you guys, right? So I'm just going to come along, and I'll continue to tie my knots and add my pearls. No big deal. And the cool thing about using this doubled thread is you can come in and you can give it a little tug like that. So this is ready to go. Now, I saw somebody in the feed ask about doing the um, changing over the griffin silk. You guys, it would be the same thing. You would just have to, like if my griffin silk broke, you would just have this end, you'd just unfurl it. So you'd have those two strands at the end, right? Like that. And then you'd send your needle through you may have to ream a pearl out on here, but you'd send your pearl, th your pearl through that way. But remember, this griffin silk is doubled, so you can just untwist it, and you've got those two legs to, um, to tie your knots with. Okay. So let me show you how I would close. Let's move to our so friend on Softlex, shall we? I'm just putting this card, this silk away, so I don't waste it. So this is ready. So that's how I did. I kept adding thread to that long 110 inch strand right here. That is how I did this. Okay, when I had to add thread. So don't be afraid. Give it a little give it a little try. Okay? So you'll you'll be uh, you'll be in good shape. All right. So uh, let me put this aside. For a hundred more inches of stringing. No, I'm just kidding. It's not going to be that long. Who knows? Who knows? Let's get our friend on the Softlex over here. Okay. So I measured, uh, I'm just shy of the 44 inches that I need. So I'm just going to take off some Softlex, uh, some, my tape there. I'm going to add just a few more beads. Okay. And again, when I'm stringing this, you know, before the broadcast, of course, we were, we're always hurrying to finish everything up for you guys to make it look seamless on air. So I was stringing on one end, and Baranduin was stringing on the other end of this strand, okay? So you can just be as random. You can see I started to kind of deliberately do some with small, 
this was Brandwin's side over here, and she kind of, you know, mixed things up. So it doesn't, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Whoops, I have two seed beads on there. Let me take one off. Go away, seed bead. There we go. It was really easy. Yeah, you just kind of, I don't know, pick what suits your fancy, right? You've got to trust in the mix. If the mix looks good in the dish, it's going to look a maze when it's done. I don't even know what dish I'm picking from, so I'm just going to add some here. I'm going to double check the length because we should be close enough here, especially with an endless bracelet. You don't want it to be... Um, you don't want it to be too tight because when you wrap this around your wrist all six times, it does, you know, it tightens up a little bit. So, you know, there needs to be some room for it to kind of move. So you want to make sure that it's long enough. So let's go ahead. Let's give this one more measure. Okay. I'm going to double it over. I just adore how this seed bead looks in between, right? Yep, 22. I'm going to say that when it's closed with the disc, it'll be right on target, okay? So, the way we're going to close this up. I know that you guys were talking a little bit earlier about having a bead with a big hole. Well, I knew you guys were going to be asking, so I grabbed